Welcome to Factory Live Distillations, Part 7, on the local food systems. Here's a little story, what we did so far, what did we learn, and where are we going? Supporting, supporting links are in the blog text. We started with urban agriculture on the streets of Madison, Wisconsin. I learned that when you put seeds in the ground, and you have soil, things will grow and produce abundantly. We went on to a five-acre plot, which we found by knocking on somebody's door and asking, by the way, you can do this, typically for free, on the outskirts of most cities. We learned about weeds and equipment. Weeds will knock out your crops very easily, and that's where most of the challenge to easy living exists. We nonetheless got tons of squash, literally, and plenty of tomato, carrot, and others. We did not know what to do with it. Most of our crop went to waste, first by weeds, and second, we found that you also need to market your wares. We even bought an antique pool behind combine. We harvested, harvested some beans, but the combine broke, we fixed it, it broke again, and we sold it on eBay for 50 bucks. We also harvested apples and made certified open source applesauce for local co-ops. The business model worked, but with free apples from a supportive farmer. The next experiment was hydroponics, the promise of outstanding yields on amazingly small space. The amazing figures are true. For example, if you grow lettuce, you can get a dollar per square foot per week. An acre of that gives you over one million dollars per year. Compare that to two hundred dollars per acre on row crop. The only trick is, the one million dollars is super intensive factory farming. It does happen, but it's not, direction, not, it's not the direction we want to go. We grew beautiful lettuce with economics similar to the above on the scale of a few growing tubs. It grew amazingly fast, we took it to market once, sold out in a second, made a hundred bucks. We got it ready to scale up, but thrips wiped out the entire second crop. The lesson so far? Things grow and grow in abundance. It's easy to manage weeds or pests on a small scale, but if you go larger, mechan mechanizations and pests play the dominant role. Plus, equipment is expensive and it breaks, so it's almost impossible to run, never mind replicate, a di diversified operation from seed to value added. Thus, local food supply chains are a fringe phenomenon today. Our present plan is a combination of tree crop, organoponic raised beds, perennial vegetables and herbs, wild crafting, er heirloom vegetables, intercropping, nursery and gene bank to reproduce and breed all of the above, along with chickens, goats, bees, worms, bats, and fish, backed up by open source, scalable equipment at the unit of 40 acre scale for field, post-harvest, and value-added production. Basically, our place is on its way to becoming an edible landscape for human and animal alike. We'd like to show easy, 100% food sustainability for our 20 to 30 person crew that we aim to assemble by the end of this year. In fact, our major goal is to build an open source combine for grains and beans, plus hay equipment for the animals, and a one acre fuel grass crop, plus the aquaponic bioponic system. We're also aiming to produce Micro Life Track, the two wheel walk behind version of the bigger open source tractor. This, therefore, ties into a beautiful food, fuel, combined heat and power, gasifier, biochar, solar power, and biofuel package. Nick's got the combined heat and power gasifier steam engine. I'm on top of the solar concentrators, and others are needed for biofuel pyrolysis oil, combine, haying equipment, general agricultural operations. Jeremy's got the sawmill that's part of our lumber production for modular housing units as part of our agroforestry action. So how do you create a 100% sustainable, integrated, local, regenerative food system? Let's take a look at some of the available techniques. Civilization started by hunting and foraging, moved on to settled agriculture, and now can return to foraging in settled lifestyles. Foraging? Kind of. We mean highly integrated agro-ecosystems and edible landscapes with a foundation in perennial agriculture. Start with staples. Mark Shepard of New Forest Farms, along with a number of others like Badger Set Farms and Oikos Tree Crops, are breeding hazelnuts and chestnuts as a potentially mainstreamable perennial agroforestry alternative to corn and soybeans, the monoculture that is the basis for U.S. agriculture. Hazelnuts contain the protein that soybeans provide, and chestnuts provide the carbohydrates that corn provides. 
Plus, the Land Institute is developing perennial grains, though none of them is being grown commercially as a food source. Establish the above, add an orchard and berries, mix in perennial vegetables in the understory, and in a five-year period, your plot of land gives you staple food forever, from trees that can literally shower you with food, as opposed to you having to do annual field crops year after year. Animals can graze in between in select areas. The orchard and nursery are another key. Include propagation capacity cuttings, mist propagation, and move on to animal stock, willow bark, rooting hormones, grafting, budding, seed for rootstocks, and so forth. This is powerful. It means that if an open source ecologist wants, wants to replicate an edible landscape or productive plot, they can at little or no cost if sweat equity is applied. This is where Factory will offer courses and living material. This spring we'll be starting this by a workshop propagating raspberries from cuttings and grafting apples, peaches, pears, and plums on rootstocks that we grew from seed. This is free, uh, a free day-long workshop for true fans, $40 for others, so sign up for the last week in February. True fans are first in line. If you're not a true fan, then you can still sign up at any time before the workshop, and the workshop will be free to you as well. We can accommodate only 12 people for the event, so sign up now if you want to learn and take home some plants. It's a treat to be able to create your own fruit trees for pennies per tree. Now, if you include animal stock in that package in the future, this becomes like Heifer Project International for open source ecology. See our proposed plant out at the wiki as far as the, the crops we aim to have. Move on to intensive agriculture, organoponic, aquaponic raised beds. This one by the name of Chinampas and was reportedly a highly successful food growing system for indigenous Mesoamerica. Adapt this to factory farm. We'll dig a circular trench like a house foundation with live track in a day. With runoff from our clay soils, this fills with water and we fill this with fish. On the island that has been created, we make raised organoponic beds with lumber from our sawmill. Fertigation feeds the beds, we harvest fish towards winter, and the chicken coop over the water feeds algae. We plan on time-lapse photography with this so you can see the details of how this works. This reminds me of closed-loop systems in the nature of the very successful integrated food and waste management systems. With bat guano from bat houses and vermiculture, we aim to close the chicken raising loop. We will be adding some grain crops such as millet and black-eyed peas. We hope the open source combine is done in time for harvest. We'll be hatching out many chicks, and our goats will go from 5 to 10 by the end of this year. Between plant out, soil fertility, equipment fabrication, and propagation work, we'll be busy this year on the agriculture front. Here's where we are throwing up a funding basket for the living stock part. We are creating an open source living gene bank and propagation facility. You can benefit greatly from this by sweat equity propagation, where then you can take the stock for free. Propagation is trivial for many plants, such as raspberries or apples. You have to come on-site for this project, and our wiki has a propagation calendar that displays available stock and timing for propagation. Supporters are welcome to come to workshops or by appointment. This is meant to be a regional plant exchange with a living facility as part of a small farm incubator for local food systems by providing access to the necessary tools, stocks, and knowledge. We're generating the necessary knowledge by documenting the successes and failures. One example of success is, if we plant out rootstock seed in the greenhouse, the plants can be ready for grafting or budding in late summer, if we take care of the plants. We did some budding, but none of it took last year. From some of the pictures in this video, does anyone have any suggestions on what went wrong? Anyway, that's a brief on our agriculture. We hope this clears up some perspectives for you and inspires you to get involved in your own food system.